Good morning, um, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, my colleague, Beth Pickett, is actually going to do the majority of the presentation um, today. But I wanted to take just a couple of minutes to introduce our organization. For those of you who are less familiar with the NROC project um, and the different um, things that we do and how we support educators across the country. Um, so NROC, um, the NROC project um, is focused on collaborating with educators such as yourself to come up with new ideas to engage students, develop content and tools to address those needs, test them with your learners and your educators, and then refine those over time and get them out um, into the great wide world so everybody can benefit from them. Um, our organization has been around for many years now, um, founded in 2003. Um, we are a nonprofit, mission-driven dri organization. Um, and our model, even though we're self-sustaining and we do have paid memberships that help us do what we do over the long term, um, our model is to really work with um, foundations and other funders to build those core content um, and, and uh, educational technology assets that we then get out to you in a couple of different ways. Um, one is to make it freely available. We're going to dive into that in detail um, this morning. Um, free to individual users. So individual teachers and students anywhere can access our resources today and use those with your students. And we hope that many of you will kind of jump in when we're finished with showing you Hippocampus and try a few things with your students. Um, and then we have low cost memberships. Um, if you really want to do a deeper integration with something like Canvas, your learning management system, um, or other systems that you use at your school and you want to be able to look at student data and that kind of thing to really help guide the learning experience. So that's when membership kind of comes into the picture. Um, so just kind of a, a nice overview. I like this slide because it shows both the um, core content materials that we've used grant funding to build and those include a two semester algebra one program, a developmental math sequence, which is maybe the name is dis misleading a little bit. It's you, when, you, when you're in higher ed, you call it developmental math. And I think everybody else calls it the math you really should have a good knowledge of when you graduate from high school. Um, we also have a, a, an English program Again, it's designed for that transition between high school and college and making sure that students are really solid in their reading and writing skills as they make those transitions. We have a couple of different tools that we offer to actually deliver this content to students. Um, so one is EdReady. Um, hopefully we'll be doing um, a session on that um, in a few weeks to give you an idea of what's available to you there. But today, we're gonna focus on Hippocampus, which is an amazing repository of digital learning objects that are at your disposal and completely free to you. Um, and Beth is gonna be diving into that um, a little more deeply. There one question did come up, um, and I'm going to use this new, new to me Zoom functionality. I'm going to answer live. Um, so someone asked, what does NROC stand for? And it actually kind of goes back to our origins in 2003, when we started out as a curator of open educational resources. And it was called the National Repository of Online Courses. And at that time, like I said, we were really focused on kind of curating, making sure that the resources we pulled together could be used readily. So you understood exactly what was in front of you, how it applied to your day-to-day -day curricular needs, and you could get it into the hands of students. 
Since then, we've actually started building things and have really focused on the needs um, of educators um, in math and English as they help students with transitions in those areas. Um, and so we decided everybody knew NROC, so we kept the NROC project as the name, but it's the acronym is kind of gone by the wayside now. Um, so with that, I am actually going to turn this over to Beth Pickett, um, who's going to do a great deep dive for us into the Hippocampus application. Perfect. Thank you so much, Danny. Let me make sure I've got all the right buttons pushed. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. All right. I want to make sure that that is working. You should be able to see my screen right now. I will go to the homepage of Hippocampus because we were jumping around in there a little bit before we started the webinar. So thank you all for taking the time to come and be introduced to Hippocampus. You may know if you took biology or physiology in college, the Hippocampus is the part of the brain related to learning and memory. And we've made a bit of a play on words here with the hippopotamus on the screen. Hippocampus is basically like a digital library that is free and open access for everyone to use and to share. I'm gonna go ahead and speaking of which, let's uh, stop my video, buy a little bit more bandwidth for you. All of the content at Hippocampus is free for people to use, easy to access, and multimedia content curated, passing through uh, you know, under the nose of subject matter experts to make sure that the content we offer is academically sound. So you can go on YouTube and look up a subject that you want to teach to your students, but if you want to know that something is high quality and it's organized in a really easy way to find it, come to Hippocampus. It's there for you to use. I have been asked to make sure that my descriptions today uh, will be appropriate for people who are visually impaired, so I'm going to try to build those descriptions in as we go. So here we are on the home page of Hippocampus, which is where everything starts. You'll see two basic boxes on our home page. On the left is a browse subject box. It has a listing of 13 different subject areas in math, natural sciences, social sciences, and in the humanities. There's another box on the right that says browse collections. These have the logos of our 20 different collections that are housed at Hippocampus. They run through our own NROC project collections of math and English, plus content from Khan Academy, Phoenix College in Phoenix, Arizona, not to be confused with the University of Phoenix, YU Art of Problem Solving, content from Mount San Jacinto College. If you come to Hippocampus and you know of a particular collection from which you would like to see content, you can go straight to the Browse Collections area and click on any of those icons to get that content. But most people are not necessarily familiar with those different collections. So what the teachers would do is just come to the Hippocampus homepage and go right to the different subjects. Because Tan is an NROC project member, however, you guys have a special version of Hippocampus that is branded for OTAN. And I'm going to show you now how to get there. If you look in the upper right hand corner of your screen, there is a black navigation bar and right in the center of that is the label log in. You should see it right there. I'm showing it with my mouse right now. If I click on the login button, I get a dialog box that pops up with three tabs and the default tab is log in. It's divided into three horizontal sections. I don't want the first section yet. That first section is if I ever need to log in for some reason. We'll talk about that later. But right now, the very last of the horizontal sections says, if you want to visit someone else's My Hippo page, you can look them up here. So I'm gonna come here and click and type My OTAN into the box and then click the button that says Look Up. And voila, it opens up now to the home page of the OTAN branded Hippocampus. So now that we're on the OTAN branded hippocampus, it means a couple of things. Not only does everybody know that this is a resource that OTAN has provided to the students and the users, it also makes sure that you're not seeing any ads as you go through the content itself. 
Any questions so far? Not yet. So I am going to show you one of the subject pages starting over here on the left hand side in the browse subjects box. The first choice in the math category is arithmetic. I'm going to click on that button to get to the arithmetic subject matter homepage. The homepage, the, the core area of this arithmetic homepage and all the subject homepages is divided into three columns. And on the far left hand side of the column is basically how you uh, navigate around and find what you want as far as the content. This content at Hippocampus, it's video, animation, simulations, and interactive activities. There are very few PDFs, Word documents, anything text-based. This is all multimedia. So over here on the left, you have some olive horizontal uh, colored areas that tell you, they ask you basically, are you looking for a presentation on something? That would be when you're teaching a student for the very first time about a topic. Some worked examples that the students can watch to see how a problem might be solved and some simulations with which they can interact. So let's go ahead and start in our own NROC collection. It's uh, one of the listings on the left-hand side in this far left column uh, is developmental math arithmetic. So I'm going to click on the developmental math arithmetic. And as soon as I clicked on that, you might have noticed that the middle column populates with the names of a bunch of different learning objects. In this case, they are all videos. Hey, they Beth. start with, yeah. Pardon me. If no. you could, can you make your browser window larger so that we have a larger um, view of Hippocampus or um, uh, make your browser fill the whole uh, screen? I can try that. It's going to stretch it out a little bit. If I view in too much, when I go to maximize in a little bit, I'm going to run off the screen, but let's try it. Okay. Thank you. Does that help? Yes, and then I think you're going to get to this question, but we had a couple of questions about if and when you might actually um, need to set up an account. Right. And I think you're going to address that a little bit later. I am, but especially for people who may be somewhat new to technology, I want to reassure them that they and their students can use Hippocampus without ever creating an account. If you'll notice where I've been so far, I have not logged in. I have not added a password. I just go. It's an open resource. It's right there available. So don't worry about the passwords or even create an account if where you are technologically, you, you don't want to go there and do some of the things that that would allow you to do, basically, which is create playlists. And we will get there a little bit later in the presentation. So this should be a little bit bigger on the screen. Hopefully, it allows you to see things a little bit better. Yes. So what I had just done on the left-hand column is going into developmental math arithmetic. The middle column now populates with the names of all the different videos that are available for developmental math arithmetic. And they are shown in sequential order in the order that most teachers would normally teach that content. There is a tiny button above the middle column. It's a pull-down menu and I, it says sort. And if I click that uh, little arrow, I can go to an option of sorting by the topic name, which is an alphabetical sort, or sequentially, as is the default. I'm gonna stick with the sequential. The very first topic under whole numbers is place value and names for whole numbers. If I click on that name, the video pops up in the video area, which is the third column, the far right-hand column. And there is a media, um, a play button, all of the controls, for the volume, it'll tell you how long this particular video is almost five minutes long. And then underneath this whole third column video area, sort of in the lower left-hand corner, there's a little tiny word that says maximize. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that so that my screen is shown a little bit bigger, it's easier to see the video. So let's take a look for just a few seconds about what this video looks like. How much money would you rather make in a month? This amount or this amount? Of the two amounts, 
of course you'd rather make this amount. But why? Well, all numbers are made up of one or more digits. A digit is one of the symbols 0, 1, 2. So you can see that he goes really back to the beginning. And because this is a developmental math course, the audience and the examples that he uses and the level of speaking is for an adult. Even an adult who, like your adult basic education learners, may be having to go back to square one to learn this material. Within the video box, in this little control bar, is a tiny box called CC, which you can probably guess means closed captions. And especially for our NROC content, we not only have the captions in English, so people can read along in addition to listening to the audio, but we also have the closed captions available in Spanish. So down here at the bottom of that closed captions box that popped up when I clicked the CC, there's, it starts off, the default is in English, but if I move my cursor to the right a little bit and click Spanish, you will see the audio, if you listen, is still in English, but they can read along in Spanish. And for those who are English language learners who are also having to learn math on top of the language, being able to read the content in their native language can help break down those barriers, keep them engaged, and help them learn this material. Any questions about that? Good so far. All right. I'm going to turn off the closed captions, minimize my screen again, and introduce you to some of the different collections we have here at Hippocampus. One of the reasons we have multiple, multiple collections, not just our own, is because we understand that different presentation styles hit students in different ways. One student might totally love Khan Academy, another student might find his level of vocabulary to be somewhat intimidating. So we have a variety of different ways to teach the same material. And I wanna show you what some of those are. In particular, there's one I wanted to show you from the STEM Byte collection. Now STEM Byte was created by a high school physics teacher using Google Glass to present videos showing how math and science are used in the real world. So here's one on order of operations. STEM Byte. Hello. For this STEM Byte, we're gonna get baby Penny dressed. Now, I have a two-year-old son, but getting a little girl dressed is a whole nother matter. Hey, hey, hey. Little girl outfits have a lot more parts to them. Sometimes I'm not sure what all those parts are for, but it reminds me in math of order of operations. When you're doing a math problem, it really matters whether you do the addition, subtraction, or the multiplication division first. It can totally change your answer. And the same is approximately true when you're dressing a baby. Should we put your pants on? Here you go. Take, for example, the onesie. Here, Penny's got her pants on, don't ya? And I could strap the onesie underneath. Now, I think that looks just fine, but my wife tells me that's not the right way to do it. Boop, 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 boop. The onesie's supposed to be snapped underneath the pants. So in the same way, let's say you're simplifying an expression and you do the addition subtraction first before the multiplication. You might end up getting a funny answer, just like Penny looked kind of funny when I did it the wrong way. Ah. It's okay, don't cry. So long as you follow the rules of math, the order of operations, or the rules of society, the social norms, you can be sure that your final product looks exactly the way it's supposed to. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Stand by. So these are the kinds of things that can help students relate what they're learning in class or why it's important to learn certain things like order of operations in a way that they can really relate to. So STEM Byte is one of my favorite collections for that aspect of learning things like math and science. We have another collection called Art of Problem Solving. This particular collection is uh, more aimed toward middle school and high schoolers who are learning math, but it may also resonate with some of the adult learners because the gentleman who is teaching it, Richard Ruzick, has such a passion for math and is so able to get into the heads of people who are trying to learn it. Really like his style. So let's look at something from the Art of Problem Solving. And we won't go through the whole video for most of these, just little snippets. But I like the Penny one, and I wanted you to see her get dressed.
Today we're going to talk about rules. Now I know, I know, I know, you don't like rules. But you're thinking about home rules. And home rules are always about what you can't do. Math rules are better because they're about what you can do. Now I'm going to start with one of the simplest rules of addition, the commutative property. We'll start with an example. I'm going to count some hats here. I've got two floppy hats, three fuzzy hats. That sounds like two plus three hats. It's also three fuzzy hats and two floppy hats, so that's three plus two hats. So in general, Richard does a really good job of explaining things first in specific examples with numbers, and then later, especially in the algebra content, teaching students how to take those numbers and step back and stop, start using variables. He's really good at explaining all of those things. By the way, if you hear sniffing in the background, it's because I put my dogs in the laundry room and they're trying to wonder where I am and why I'm not letting them out. And they're sniffing rather loudly, so I apologize for that. Hey Beth, I wanted to just, um, uh, one question has come sure. up a, a couple of times and I thought it might be best to answer it live. Sure. Um, so one question is about content specifically for the ESL learner. Um, and whether we have collections that address the, the very specific needs of those learners. Um, so maybe you want to just talk to that for just a moment. Sure. Um, and then another one, which you are going to get to in a while, um, the College and Career Readiness Standards for Adult Education. We have done alignments for those and those are available um, for math. And a little, again, a little bit later on in the presentation, Beth will show you how to access those. Yes, in fact, we're almost there, not quite on the standards. But as far as the ESL goes, no, we do not have one specific collection that focuses on that. We do have areas of our English collections that also talk about how our content can be used for ESL. But no, we don't have anything specifically and only for them. We do have supports, like I showed you in math, with the um, closed captioning, but other specific material for teaching English as a second language, we do not have a collection for that. However, we are always open to adding other free resources to Hippocampus. So if there are resources that people want to suggest to us that we could approach the creators and incorporate it, we are always willing to take a look at that. So what I'm doing right now is going a little bit through the different collections to give you an idea of the variety of what we offer. Phoenix College. So as you could tell a little bit with Art of Problem Solving, uh, that audience is a little bit younger than our adult, um, our adult students. Not that our adult students wouldn't be able to learn from that, but again, like everybody else, the adult students may have a different sensibility for how they like information to be presented to them. So now, and I forgot to do this earlier with the Art of Problem Solving, I've gone back to the arithmetic homepage, left-hand column, and I'm choosing a different collection. Earlier, I chose Art of Problem Solving, and I picked the very first video available for them. Now I'm in the Phoenix College collection, left-hand side, I'm clicking their arithmetic, and it has populated the middle column with all of their different videos available. Uh, so Phoenix College, I think I was going to show the first one. Adding integers with the same sign using color counters. And you can tell that this particular presentation style is very straightforward for if you have a very no-nonsense adult who just wants to learn it clearly. Here we go. Uh, I will maximize the screen. Welcome to a lesson on adding integers with two color counters. In this lesson, we'll look at examples of adding integers with the same sign. In the next lesson, we'll look at examples of adding integers with different signs. An integer is a number that can be written without a... You can see quite straightforward there as far as how he's presenting it. Beth? Yeah. Um, can you open one of the NROC uh, math topics or videos mm -hmm. that has the closed captioning in Spanish and just show our viewers how you toggle to the Spanish version of that closed captioning? Sure, we'll do that again. So on the left-hand side, left-hand column, I've gone to the NROC collection, developmental math arithmetic, and I clicked that to populate the middle column with all the videos. I've clicked on the first video, or I might as well click on a different one because you've already seen that place value. 
I've clicked on estimation video, which populates, it makes that video pop up in the right hand side, the screen where we show things. I push on the play button in the media control panel that's there. And here we go. Do you have enough money to buy what you need? I'm going to pause the video now, double uh, click once on the CC button, and it defaults to the English closed caption. Now, our closed captions are a little bit different than some you might have seen on TV, which are two lines at the bottom of the screen. Ours is over to the right in a column. The default, as I said, um, and you'll notice when I have the mouse inside the viewing area, the control um, panel is available to change the volume, click on the CC or play or pause. When I move my mouse outside of that area, that clears the screen and the control area goes away. It makes it a little bit easier to see. So over on the right, you can see we have the English uh, subtitles available and all I do is click on Spanish if I want the Spanish version. But again, he's still speaking in English. About how much more does one item cost than another? These are common questions that rounding and estimating can help you find the answer. Does that help answer that question? It does. Thank you. And then you'll be talking about playlists in a while. Um, there are folks who are asking about how these materials might be shared or assigned to students. And so um, people are itching to figure out how to actually implement. <laughs> Perfect. Well, let me take a sidebar. If you just have one video that you want to share with students from Hippocampus, if you'll notice, over here, we're in the far right under the uh, video viewing area. And the very last little icon below the box that includes all these three columns, it's a little, it's supposed to be a chain link. It looks like almost a sideways snowman or a number eight. And it says link to this topic if I roll over it. If I click on that, you should be able to see that a dialogue box pops up with a link. And you can copy and paste that link. You can throw it in an email. You can put it in a Word document or a Google document and share it with your students. So in this example, we're looking at the estimation video from the Unrock project. In the dialog box that popped up, all you have to do is highlight the entire link starting with HTTP and copy and paste it anywhere you want. So that's a really easy way to grab videos and animations, sort of onesie twosie, and use them in your uh, for your students if you want. Perfect. You, if a little more advanced, one step up from that is the playlist where you gather a bunch of those together, we'll get there. Perfect, thank you, Beth. Uh-huh, I still wanted to show you one of the other collections, which is Why You. This is an animation, and this particular one had to do with factoring. So what I've done is in the far left-hand corner, I found the Why You collection pre-algebra foundational concepts. I clicked on that title, it populated the middle column with all of the different why you videos. And now I'm clicking on the one, the title that says factoring. And now I can play the factoring video. Hello, I'm Professor Von Schmohawk and welcome to why you. In the previous lecture, we saw that numbers which divide evenly into a natural number are said to be that number's factors. For instance, since 3 divides evenly into 6, we say that 3 is a factor of 6. Numbers that have exactly two factors... So one of the things with the YU video is that they have done a very nice job not only of professionally animating these math concepts and using, you know, ding and a highlight or changing the text uh, color of the font of the numbers from black to red, showing how things move around, which can be a really helpful visual way to learn the math. Um, but their, their goal is not only to teach how something is solved, how a math problem is solved, but why do we do it that way? To help those students who have that itching desire to know, I, I understand the formula, but why does it work? Hence the name, why you? Now, you will notice that Professor Von Schmohawk is holding a pipe. And we have had people write to us and say, oh, we were trying to get the kids not to smoke. Totally true. It's a bubble pipe. And every now and then, probably not often enough, you'll see the little bubbles come out. So it is not a tobacco pipe. He's not actually smoking anything. He's just got a bubble pipe. So that's a, an item there for uh, 
YU. If you scroll then back over to the far left-hand column, in the simulations area, so we had presentations, we had worked examples, we have simulations. Oh, I'm gonna show a simulation, then I'm gonna go back because I wanna show you worked examples as well. Simulations, the FET collection is one of our collections. They are interactive activities. So we were just learning about factors in one of our earlier videos. Now we can go to the FET interactive simulations and practice. So here we have multiplication. I'm gonna to go to factor and click on that. This is sort of a, a, it's not an animation, but it's a little bit cartoony in the way that it looks. There are three boxes available, uh, which are supposed to represent easy, medium, and hard. I'm going to click the first box, which is the easy one, and I've been given a times table grid. And beneath the times table grid, it says question mark times question mark equals 16. And basically what it's asking me to do is find on the times table grid, the two items that we can multiply to get to 16. Now my grid only goes up to six, so I can't use two times eight. I have to go and take my mouse and scroll around in the grid until I get to four times four. And if I click on the four times four box, I get a little audio signal that I have done that correctly. Now, beneath the grid, the formula has changed to what times what equals 20. So I can either go to the four times five box, where is that? or the five times four box. Either one of those would work. It gives the student an opportunity to practice what they just learned. So those are how our simulations and interactive activities go. Now, I forgot to show something just a little earlier. Do you remember when we were in, on the left-hand column, all the way at the top, NROC collection, under the presentations, we had developmental math arithmetic, and we went to the place values and uh, names for whole numbers, the presentation. If a student wants to watch the presentation and then see how it is used, they can go back over to that first column, scroll down to the worked examples area, and also in the NROC collection developmental math arithmetic, click on that, and they'll get all the worked examples that perfectly align with the presentation they just watched on place value and names for whole numbers. So let me play one of those worked examples for you. I think you'll recognize the person who is teaching it. Find the place value of 3 in 4,356. So yes, these are from Saul Khan of Khan Academy. We hired him to do these for us years ago before Khan Academy really got as big as it is today. So these are actually folded into the Khan Academy. Um, content on his website as well, but these are the worked examples that he did specifically for us to align to the presentations that we uh, give the students in our developmental math, the arithmetic and all the other developmental math sections that we have. Perfect. You, yeah, we uh, have go standards of next. Yes, Danny. Um, so one, actually, at the end of the presentation, I will circle back to this. Um, Sarah is asking if we provide student worksheets and can they um, can things be downloaded can the media be downloaded when students don't have internet access and at the end of the session I will Sarah um, share with you some uh, OER um, resources that are text resources that are aligned specifically to NROC math and English. It's sort of separate, but I'll make sure that you have the URL for that. Um, and Beth can address that question, then I'll go to the next question. Mm -hmm. So remember that focus of Hippocampus is the multimedia, the video, the animation, the simulation, the worked examples. So we don't have on Hippocampus itself a whole lot of text-based workbooks, PDFs, any of that. Danny, you asked earlier, you, you passed on a question someone had about the standards. So yeah. let's say we're back in the left-hand column and we click NROC Collection Developmental Math Arithmetic and we're at, uh, let's see, place value and names for whole numbers. I like that video and let's say that I wanna find out, well, is it aligned to any standards that I'm looking for because I need to fulfill certain standards for my students. So here we are, after I click the name of the video in the middle column, it's popped in back over on the right-hand side, 
And underneath the video, to the left of that little link that I showed you just a few minutes ago, there's a check mark. I'm going to click the check mark and it opens, it pops open a new dialog box. The standards dialog box. At the top of the standards dialog box is a drop down menu. If I click my mouse and hold the drop down, hold it on the drop down menu, I have four options of standards that I can look at that align with this particular video. California standards, college and career readiness standards for adult education, ding, 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 national standards and common core standards. So of course, for OTAN, I'm going to the adult ed standards. And it immediately populates in that dialog box by grade level, CCRSA, B, NBT, 1.1A, and all the other standards for which this video helps meet that standard. So that's one way to do it starting with the video. You can go the other way as well. So I close the dialog box. Now I'm back on the arithmetic subject page with that video still popped up there. But at the very top of the, of the main box where the three columns live, you'll see some tabs that I haven't mentioned before. We have been in the default tab. It's orange now. It says browse topics. Then there's a tab called launch a course, textbook correlations. But the fourth tab is called standards correlations. If I click on that tab, it takes me to a new view of the three columns. And instead of the collections and course names in the far left, now I've got the standards. And I have it set for adult education grade five. And it's got all the different uh, standards here listed by you know, CEE 1.1, CEE 1.2.1. Let's say I want CEE 1.3.1. If I click that in the left-hand column, it populates all the different videos from any collection here on the arithmetic page at Hippocampus that help meet that standard. So for example, uh, here's one multiplication of multiple term radicals from NROC. Here's one, one variable fractions part two from AOPS, that's art of problem solving. If I scroll down a little bit more, square roots and real numbers from Khan Academy, rational exponents from YU. And as in earlier, if I click on any of those video titles in the middle column, I click on it, the video pops up on the right, and I can go ahead and watch it. Any questions on the standards? I do want to show you how to change if you don't want grade five, if you want a different standard. Here in the olive horizontal bar, where it says standards basically, I'm going to click on a uh, button that says settings. If I click on the settings button, it pops open a dialog box called standards settings. And here again is a drop down box content standard. Which one do you want? And it's the same options we had earlier the California standards, Cal uh, college and career readiness for adult education, Common Core, or national. So I've got my college and career readiness. I can pick the subject. We're on the arithmetic page, so it's only giving me math. It's not going to give me any English subjects. And then I can pick anywhere from third grade to 12th grade. So let's say I'm searching for math 12th grade. I click the save button at the lower right hand corner of the dialog box. And those are the standards. Um, one, two, three, four, five. We have six standards here for which we have content at Hippocampus. If I click on one of those standards in the left column, again, we get different content popping up in the middle column. And I can click on it in the, the name, the title in the middle column, and it pops up on the right. How are we, oh, I just did something and I need to tell you what I just did. How are we doing so far? Any questions? We did have one question come up um, that asked, does each collection explain its target audience? No, you have to figure that out either by sending me an email and I will tell you, <laughs> <laughs> or watching it, you'll pick it up pretty quickly when you watch it, especially the, the collections that are aimed at a bit of a younger audience. Um, the middle school and high school, you can tell those pretty quickly. But there is not a description overall of the collections. Great. Thank you, Beth. So it's more trial and error on that. Or just shoot me an email and I can help you with that. Okay. So here's something to pay attention to. Here we are on the arithmetic subject page. I want to take you to English and show you what's there. 
but there is no way to get directly from the arithmetic page to the English page. So I think of this sort of like a Christmas tree with a star at the top and a string of lights, you know, 13 lights going straight down to the bottom. If you're at the bottom, if you want to go to another string of lights, you have to go back up to the top. So I'm going to click on the OTAN logo. It will take me back to the hippocampus homepage, and now I can go to a different subject page. So we're going to go over to English and take a look there. And Beth, we did have a request to show a grammar lesson when we're in, in, in English, if you have. Oh, well, I'm just about to get into all the English stuff, so <laughs> perfect. This is great. Okay, so we have our own NROC Developmental English Collection. This is for students who are graduating high school. They need shoring up to be able to do credit level college English. And we do that pretty quickly in 10 units. Now, I've told you a few times that Hippocampus is based on video animation, simulation, interactive activities. Our own English collection is the one place on Hippocampus where you will find a PDF because each of our 10 units revolves around a reading area. What we've tried to do in our developmental English is it's an integrated approach. And here's how it works. Students are introduced to a topic through a reading. Let's say the topic sentence. And they read something and they learn to spot a topic sentence in a reading. And then later when they go to writing, we ask them to write their own topic sentence. So it's almost like the reading is sort of role modeling how to do it, and then they get to practice it in the writing. Now, our installed English course actually has a feature, a writing center, where they can correspond with the teacher write the paper in that software, Hippocampus can't do that. Hippocampus is not tracking any student. Notice we still have not logged in anywhere. We're on the, the OTAN homepage, but it's free and open to the public, which also means that it's not tracking any one student's activities. We're not big brother watching who's doing what. We don't know what any one particular student has done. That's not the purpose of Hippocampus. That's something for EdReady, which is a different webinar. So that's, but anyway, I wanna show you, so for example, in this middle column now, we've got the 10 units of NROC's developmental English. We've got the introduction. We can go here. Actually, what was I gonna do? Oh, I was gonna do the writing workshop. So here's the writing workshop from unit one. You may notice that all the stages for each unit are the same. Introduction, and this is the order. Introduction, pre-reading, reading, post-reading, post pre-writing, writing workshop one, writing workshop two, and then grammar in context. So let me go ahead and play just a little bit of this. Imagine it's the bottom of the ninth, two outs, and your favorite baseball team only has one more chance to win the game. Coach pulls you from the stands to bat. What do you expect to do? You have a great imagination, but in reality, the odds of hitting a home run on your first at bat are discouraging. Writing is no different. Success requires patience and commitment to write, read, and reread to create a polished final draft. So we're really teaching them about the entire writing process as we're developing their skills as writers. So I wanna show you something in particular um, in one of the other collections if you want straight on grammar, that would probably be, of course we have our own NROC collection. I'm back over on the left-hand uh, column right now. I'm gonna go over to the Mount San Jacinto, which is a community college here in Southern California. And they have two of their instructors, Larry and Ted. So we kind of call this the Larry and Ted show. They do a wonderful job of presenting fundamental information on how to put together writing bits and pieces to create an actual paper. They call this course Crafting an Effective Writer, Tools of the Trade. And so I've clicked on the verbs and adverbs lesson from that middle column. Here we go. All right, now let's take a look at verbs and adverbs. Verbs indicate an action or a state of being, and adverbs are going to modify verbs, adjectives, and even other adverbs. Mm. Without action verbs, your prose is going to seem lifeless. It's going to be pretty short and simple. So if we take a look at an example, you'll see how you can add to your verbs with adverbs. This particular sentence, 
lacks energy. The seals got out of the water, moved across the deck, and made sounds at the spectators. So how did they get out of the water? Mm -hmm. How did they move? Mm -hmm. How made sounds? I mean, all those are vague verbs. We can bring more action mm -hmm. verbs into this. The seals leaped out of the water. They slid across the deck. They barked at the spectators. So in other examples from Mount San Jacinto, they will show you know, red cross outs, what you expect to see somewhat in an English paper, but they really break it down quite nicely, especially in those grammar lessons. In addition, this particular Mount San Jacinto, I'm going to take you to a new place here at Hippo, which we haven't been. It's not any, uh, it's not hard to get to. I'm just scrolling down the page to what we call below the fold. And you'll notice that there are two columns below the fold. On the right hand column, it says links, and there's a link here for something called the course reader for crafting an effective writer tools of the trade. And it's basically a free handbook. I clicked on that link, it opened a PDF, a 90 page PDF in a new browser tab that goes along with this entire set of presentations. So that is also available as a free resource to your student. Not only do they have a free workbook, we have a free, basically, handbook for our developmental English. And when I say our, I mean the NROC project. And that's over here on this left-hand column below the fold. It's called the Teaching English blog, but actually the blog a while ago was replaced with what we call these English foundation lessons. These are HTML pages, but they correspond to the same 10 units for which you saw the videos earlier. And these deal with specific topics in reading and writing that may be of interest to your students. And in particular, if we're looking for grammar, we've got a listing here for prepositional phrases, subjects and verbs, end punctuation. So let me click on end punctuation. It pops open a new browser window. It gives a bit of a lesson, and then there are several items we can click on to expand, practical application, an example of how it's used, your turn to let the students practice uh, a little bit of this, and then metacognitive questions with sample answers. So that is a second option. Again, all of this is meant to find what works really well for your student. What is going to resonate with them? One student may really love the workbook from um, Mount San Jacinto College. Another might like the foundation lessons from NROC. It's all good as long as they're learning the material. Let's see. And we are coming relatively close to the end of the hour. Um, I think there, there was an interest as well in understanding how to put multiple items into um, a playlist. I will go through that really quickly because you're right, we are running out of time a little bit. I do want to show you just in case you, I'm, I'm going to show you how to make a playlist if you forget also below the fold in the right hand column, there is something called, a, it's a four minute video called how to make a playlist on Hippocampus. Okay, so until this time I have not logged into Hippocampus, I'm just a random person out on the web or maybe your student or yourself coming to Hippocampus to learn material. If I want to make a playlist and collect things that are saved, then I need an account. And to do that, I need to go back up to that black navigation bar in the upper right, I'm going to click log in. There are three tabs in this dialog box. The first is log in, the second is create an account. I already have an account, but if you want to create an account, this is where you would go. Be sure that you're on the a OTAN branded hippocampus before you create your account so that you can create what we call a child account of OTAN and not just the public hippocampus so that you can get the branding and no ads. I'm going to go ahead and log in. We've seen this screen before earlier when we went to the My OTAN at the bottom of the three horizontal sections, we went to the last one. But now I'm gonna to go to the top one and I'm gonna go, what did I call it? OTAN Demo, that's what I called it. OTAN Demo. So I put in my login name and my password and I click the button that says go to My Hippo page. And you'll notice I'm on the home page. Really, it doesn't look any different, except in the upper right-hand corner uh, navigation, it now says log out or edit account. So now that I'm here, let's go ahead and go to arithmetic. 
in the subject with those 13 areas, I'm gonna click on arithmetic. And now I'm back, but there's a new item available at the very top of that left-hand column. It says playlists. I've got a new playlist and I'm gonna speed it up a little bit here. I hope you don't mind. Let's click on, what do I wanna do? I think I want to- we're good, on, we're good on time, Beth. We, okay. we were okay. reminded we can go over past the beginning of the hour, so you don't have to go into hyperdrive yet. <laughs> All right. Um, so here we saw earlier, I believe we saw the factoring on YU. If I click on uh, pre-algebra foundational concepts on the left, I click on the name of it on the right, but I'm gonna click and hold my mouse and I'm gonna drag that little puppy. If you'll notice, I'm clicking, it, oh, clicking on it in the middle column, holding down my mouse and moving that text over to the left-hand column where it says playlists. It has turned blue, my playlist is blue, and I let go. And that basically drops that video into the playlist bucket. So I'm making a playlist on um, factoring. Now I'm gonna go back over to the FET collection on the left-hand side. I'm gonna find that arithmetic interactive activity that we did earlier. Well, now here, I've gone all the way down to the bottom of the left-hand column. I can't see the playlist, so I have to stop and scroll back so I can see the playlist uh, at the top of that left-hand column. And now I can hold my mouse over the name of arithmetic, this particular simulation that I want in the middle, drag it and drop it in. So it's, that's all there is to making a playlist. Log in and drag and drop into your playlist. Now my playlist, if I click on the name new playlist, it now says a parentheses two, it means I have two items in my playlist. And if I click on it, those two items pop up in the middle column. But even better, on the left-hand column where it says new playlist parentheses two, there's a tiny little icon with an arrow going up and out. That says, open this playlist in a new browser tab. If I click on that, here's my playlist in a brand new tab. It's all by itself. It doesn't have all the rest of that hippocampus stuff. It's perfect to use for my students to send them this particular link. Uh, I have just highlighted what's in the URL area of my Chrome browser. I can copy and paste that and share that with my students. Now this particular one, I don't really want to keep this name. I'm going to close that browser tab and go back to Hippocampus. I want to change that name so that's a little better than new playlist. So in the olive bar where it says playlists, I'm going to click the edit button. And here's my edit playlist dialog box. And there's already a, a box available that I can type over where it says the title of my playlist. And I'm gonna call this OTAN demo for factoring. I just type it right into the box. And then at the lower right, I click the save button. And now I have a new title. You have to be a little careful if you're changing your titles because look, when I click on the open in a new browser window, it has now changed the URL. The title determines the URL. So if you change a title of a playlist that you've already sent out to your students, you will have to send them a new one. So make sure you pick a title you wanna stick with before you send something out to the students. Here's another thing with the playlists. I'm going to now, I'm back on the arithmetic subject page. I click on the edit button. I want to add to this playlist a link to something that's not in Hippocampus. I have this other video from YouTube I wanna use, peachy awesome. Here's my list of playlists. And over on the right, uh, there's a column called settings with a gear icon. I click the gear icon for that one particular playlist. And down here in the lower right, it, there's an opportunity to add an external URL as a playlist topic. Well, I happen to have gotten one earlier from YouTube. So I'm gonna go out to YouTube, copy and paste the URL from the Chrome browser um, URL area, the address area, and I'm going to paste it into URL to launch, and then I'm going to title this, I don't know, more factoring from YouTube. And there's a little button on the left that says add URL. Don't click the save, that's for something else. Over here to add the URL. So now, yes, now you can go away because you're already saved. Um, the O10 demo for factoring has three items in it. Two of them are from Hippocampus, one of them is from YouTube, and it will pop right up either uh, on the Hippocampus in the media window 
or if you open the new tab for a playlist, it will show here on your playlist. So that's the quick and dirty playlists, uh, how to do those. Again, there's a four minute movie, exactly how to do that. Right yeah. below, you know, on the hip, every hippocampus subject page has that link to the how to create a hippocampus playlist. Great. And I'm going to type that um, you, URL directly to that little tutorial into the Q&A area again. I know that that section went a little quickly for some folks. Um, so, and, and I know there are a few steps, so I would encourage you to watch that four minute um, video to get a, a really solid understanding. Um, are folks not seeing, let, let me type that in the chat area for some reason, perhaps the uh, URL I'm sharing is not um, going out here. So I will put this in the chat. Um, and then Beth, there was sort of a, a question in terms of process. I think um, as we moved from sort of the public facing non logged in um, mm -hmm. version of OTAN's hippocampus site um, went from there to a teacher creating an account mm -hmm. and thereby having the ability to create playlists. Mm -hmm. I think we may have lost a couple of people on that for that transition. If, if we could go to the logged out state and show um, where you would actually create an account yep. at the OTAN site, that would be fantastic. Sure. So I'm back now on the hippocampus homepage for OTAN. Up in the upper right hand uh, corner nav bar, the black navigation area, I'm going to go ahead and log out. So now I'm back where we were most of the webinar. I'm not logged in. Nothing has happened. Anybody can go here and look at anything. Really, although most people won't know about the OTAN branded site, they'll go to public hippocampus. So let's say that I'm an OTAN instructor. I do want to create an account have to start on that OTAN page. If you don't, I can fix it later, but it's best if you start on the OTAN homepage, then you go up in the upper right-hand corner of black navigation bar to log in, click it once. I don't have an account yet, so I can't log in, which is the first tab available in this dialog box. I need to create a uh, click the middle tab, create account. I pick a login ID and a password. It asks me the password again, for my email address, my name, my position, am I with a college or a high school, what state, that helps it figure out what standards to put in, um, although you're OTAN, so it already knows who you are. Subject of interest, if you have one, and then there's a little button at the bottom that says create my account, and voila, you click create my account, and you're in, and you're ready to do playlists. Fantastic, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. The only other thing that I might have shown, but I think we'll let people look at this on their own. I've shown you just two of the subject pages. We have 13. So biology, chemistry, you know, econ, history and government. Go look at some of the resources that are available because there's a lot here at Hippocampus. Math and English are the two that are most filled out and complete because of course we have created our own content in those subject areas but we have a lot of content in the others as well. A few places you will notice that content is still in flash. Either the content cannot be updated as it is with the SciTech um, collection because those are, they're actually really wonderful interactive activities for English, but they were created in flash and they can't be updated. Others like some of the Dallas County learning objects um, are in the process of being updated from Flash to HTML5. So if you poke around, you may find some things that are still in Flash. We are trying to take care of that. And that's pretty much all I had. Anything else, Danny, from the questions? Um, we have a, a couple of qu questions. Let's see. Um, typically, is Hippocampus, there's, there's one question about District, um, a district administrator having browser settings that don't allow Chromebooks to access Vimeo or YouTube. Um, do, are there recommendations for um, putting in a request perhaps 
for the um, district administrator to allow access to hippocampus as a, a safe I mean, you can, I'm not sure how that would work on your end, but normally hippocampus is not blocked by schools. And if you approach the people who are in charge of blocking and unblocking and show them what hippocampus is all about, that should help. But beware, if you are using YouTube videos in your playlists and YouTube is blocked, your students may not be able to see those particular items on your playlist. Yeah, good point, good point. So we're really asking for the hippocampus.org domain to use uh, techie language, <laughs> you, that domain to be sort of cleared or approved yeah. by your administrator. Yeah. And we can, you know, if, if you reach out to us, we'll uh, put up our email addresses at the end. So if you need any assistance, um, you know, with language, uh, making that overture, <laughs> then we could certainly try and try and assist you there. Um, and then Danny, I do have, um, uh, Danny, I'm sorry, this is Melinda. Um, I'm also going to pop in here real quick because I'm a, a Google administrator. Yes. Um, if they also needed maybe some verbiage to send to their network administrator on how they need YouTube or why they need YouTube, um, or anything with the Chromebooks, they can also contact OTAN and we can get that information to them as well. Yeah. Not specifically to Hippocampus, but specifically to the Chromebook. Something's being blocked. We have verbiage we can send. Perfect. So Perfect. that might help as well. <laughs> Danny, are you ready for me to stop sharing and send this back to you? Yeah, that would be great. And I am just going to go back to my. Um, slides here real quick. Bear with me. I know you can't see it yet, so bear with me. Terrific. Um, this has been just a, a great interactive session. You all have kept me really busy <laughs> in the background addressing all of your questions. Um, but if there are some things that we weren't able to get to, or there are some things that are still a little bit unclear, um, I think maybe we have one or two people who had created teacher accounts, but maybe not on OTAN site. Um, these are all things that we can address for you, and we would be more than happy um, to help you. Um, our email addresses are bpicket at nroc.org and dpedrati at nroc.org. They're on the screen now. Um, please feel free to reach out to either one of us directly. If you would like some clarification, um, maybe uh, assistance with part of the um, uh, uh, resources that we shared today, um, we would be more than happy to help. So just send us a message and we'll address your questions as they come through. And I think um, that is really all for us today. That's all the content that we have prepared. Um, both Beth and I hope that you will take some time to check out the Hippocampus resources um, and share them with your students. Hi, Danny and Beth. Thank you so much. This is Anthony from OTAN. Um, again, thanks for a great presentation on the Hippocampus. We really appreciate um, the both of you spending some time with us this morning to let us know about this amazing resource. Um, I do want to take just a couple of minutes. I did see it um, to your point, Danny, there were a couple of questions about, you know, maybe, um, okay, how do I get started again? So I just want to um, show folks on the OTAN website where they can um, get more information about the NROC resources, including Hippocampus, and where we have provided some information about how to get started with those resources. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And you should see the OTAN website, which is OTAN.us. So again, just a little bit of orientation to our website. So come to the OTAN uh, website, OTAN.us. Um, our top story is the list of upcoming OTAN activities for the week. Um, we just started off the week with our Hippocampus presentation, but if you continue to read the news item um, on this page, you will see 
a list of the, of the webinars that we have upcoming this week. We have a very full schedule again, um, all kinds of webinars that we hope will be useful for you as you are uh, working with your students online. If you look for in the right hand corner, if you look for this COVID-19 field support button and go ahead and click on it, I do want to direct your attention to the, if it comes up here, I want to direct your attention to this first resource that's listed under the uh, OTAN heading. It's our OTAN resource guide. If you go ahead and click on it, um, this is um, a place where we are trying to put a lot of information about a variety of resources and how you might use these resources with your students um, in the, into this guide. But I want to point out, um, if you go all the way down towards the end of the resource guide to this online curricula section, we do have a space devoted to NROC. And uh, Danny, in the very beginning of her presentation, mentioned um, a number of things, including, hip, uh, including Hippocampus, EdReady, and those developmental courses. So in the resource guide, we do have some information about those resources and how you can connect with OTAN to get more information about them. Um, so in the very beginning, Beth mentioned the um, the OTAN portal on the Hippocampus site. So actually, if you click this link, this will direct you to the My OTAN space on Hippocampus. And then you can create your account and then do the other work that you would like to do there as well. Um, but uh, Beth and Danny also talked about EdReady. They talked about the developmental English and math courses. So we have a lot of information about that in the resource guide. Um, Beth and Danny mentioned that you can reach out to them at NROC, but you also can contact us at OTAN as well. Um, Penny Pearson, one of our coordinators, I think has been um, sitting in on the webinar this morning. So she and Netta Anaseri um, can also help anyone who has questions about the NROC resources um, that are available through our partnership with NROC. 